The Taliban again looking to calm fears following their takeover of Afghanistan. In a news conference, the Taliban spokesperson Zabikullah Muhajid spoke of bringing Afghans together, saying all groups confronting the group were forgiven in the interest of peace and stability in Afghanistan. Mujahid adds private media could continue to be free and independent. He also says everyone, including women, would be allowed to return to work where permitted. نظام باندې کار روان ده دا اوس زموږ مشرتابه په جدیت سره بوخته ده چې نظام جوړونه د پاره پروسه تکمیل کړي او نظام به جوړ شي په دې باندې په جدیت سره کار روان تاسو ته بیا اطمینان درکوم او کله چې منتظر پاتې شو تکمیل شي او بیا موږ اعلان واورو During their 1996 to 2001 rule, the Taliban also guided by Islamic law stopped women from working and barred girls from going to school. While Britain has urged countries not to recognize the legitimacy of the Taliban, the European Union said it would cooperate with the new Afghan government if they respect fundamental rights, including those of women. 35 Filipinos evacuated by their companies out of Afghanistan arrive in Manila Tuesday night. The repatriates were flown out from Doha, Qatar, on a flight chartered by the Department of Foreign Affairs. On Sunday, the DFA issued Alert Level 4 in Afghanistan and advised Filipinos there to prepare for mandatory evacuation. A Filipino in Afghanistan told ABS-CBN News he is with 18 other compatriots in an evacuation center near the Kabul International Airport, awaiting an opportunity to fly out. He also shared the Taliban already attempted to enter the compound. Meron pong attempt na andiyan na sila sa gate. Uh, yun nga lang talagang uh, nagpapasalamat nga ako dahil maganda talaga ang, ang servisyo ng British security company namin at uh, hindi sila nag-succeed. Nag, uh, uh, parang naitaboy. The DFA says it is working non-stop to explore all options to ensure the safety of Filipinos in Afghanistan. Malacanang, meanwhile, says the Philippines is willing to receive Afghan asylum seekers. It adds it is leaving it up to the DFA whether to establish diplomatic channels with the Taliban. The United Nations calls on the international community to open their doors to Afghan refugees. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says all countries must do what it can to prevent Afghanistan from becoming a safe haven for terrorists. The international community must unite to make sure that Afghanistan is never again used as a platform or safe haven for terrorist organizations. I appeal to the Security Council and the international community as a whole to stand together, to work together and act together, and use all tools at its disposal to suppress the global terrorist threat in Afghanistan and to guarantee that basic human rights will be respected. The UN Security Council also calls for urgent talks for the creation of a new government in Afghanistan. But the country's envoy to the UN fears the Taliban may not keep any of the promises they make. We are extremely concerned about Taliban's not honoring their promises and commitments made in their statements at Doha and at other international fora. We've witnessed time and again how Taliban have broken their promises and commitments in the past. U.S. President Joe Biden must take a bold step to protect the Afghan people. That's according to Nobel Peace Prize winner Malala Yousafzai. She describes the situation in Afghanistan as an urgent humanitarian crisis. I think every country has a role and responsibility right now. Countries need to open their borders to Afghan refugees, to the displaced people. Biden has a lot to do. President Biden has uh, has to take a bold step for the protection of, of the people of Afghanistan. What we must remember that, you know, in Afghanistan, it goes to up to like back to four four decades, right? So you don't even know where to start in history and, and who to start with and who, who to blame locally, regionally, globally. Uh, and, and the politics are just deep, multifaceted, complicated. Uh, but what is really important is, is that we remember that the people who have suffered the most are the innocent civilians of Afghanistan. At age 12, Malala blogged under a pen name for the BBC about living under the rule of the Pakistani Taliban. 
In 2012, she survived being shot in the head by a Taliban gunman for campaigning against its attempts to deny women education.